Until the early 1900s, Craters of the Moon was a big blank spot on the map. Though Native Americans used the region, white settlers avoided it. But about 1915, reports of a rare type of grizzly bear attracted the attention of Boise taxidermist and adventurer Robert Limbert. He could not believe that this undiscovered land existed in Idaho. It had never been mapped. No one had ever seen it before. And it changed his life being out here. It totally changed the direction of his life. Limbert fell in love with the area. He traveled its length. He photographed it and wrote about it in National Geographic magazine. He worked tirelessly to promote the region. In 1924, the same year that Limbert's National Geographic magazine article appeared, President Calvin Coolidge signed a proclamation creating Craters of the Moon National Monument. But after his untimely death in 1933, Limbert's contributions to the creation of Craters of the Moon National Monument faded away. That is, until decades later when historians rediscovered his remarkable collection of pictures and writings. Filmmaker Steve Wursta produced a documentary of Limbert's life and his explorations into Limbert's past led him on a journey of his own, a journey to find Limbert's lost valley. It all started in 1861 when an Idaho pioneer, George Goodhart, was apparently taken blindfolded into this valley where the Shoshone would hide during times of war. And only when he was inside the valley was he allowed to see, and all he could describe it as, this valley with red cliffs, walls. And many, many decades later, he tried to lead two other trips into this area, trying to find where he was, never could locate it. But Limbert thought he might know where it was. So he took a group of 14 men and women on an adventure to find the Lost Valley. They came out here, and over a period of 10 days, explored the area and went incredibly deep into the lavas and did find the Lost Valley. Although Limbert wrote about their journey, he never left clear directions. And so the Lost Valley remained lost until Wursta tracked down the diary of one of Limbert's fellow explorers, Joseph Yolo. Based on that information, and the coordinates that we've uncovered from Limbert, we came out here 80 years to the date in May and made a trek to the Lost Valley. As we started hiking, it kept getting further and further away. It was like someone had a zoom lens and we kept getting pulled away. I guess it gave new respect for Limbert and what he accomplished. Until you've actually walked a mile you have no idea what it's like to be out here. It just tears your shoes up. It is hot, it's dry, and you're really hoping that somewhere you're gonna find water. So when we were getting closer to the Lost Valley, I decided to do an end run around the rest of the group because I wanted to be there first. And I cut across to this huge, huge cinder mound, and when I got up to the top of this ridge line, I looked down and it was this beautiful, I, I guess what you would call a, a valley, but what in fact what it was is an area of very, very smooth lava. As it turned out, we ended up setting up a camp right where Limbert and his party camped 80 years to the date. And when we read the diary later that night, we realized that they also chose it because it was such a beautiful spot. We don't know how long ago someone had piled lava rocks up to make a windbreak and a fire ring. As we moved on further, we found the cave that was found by Joseph Yolo. The logs inside the cave had not been disturbed. We have a photograph and it matches the one taken 80 years ago. I don't know, it gave me a little bit of a chill because nobody in 80 years had seen these photographs or the diary, and here we are, we felt like we were with them. It was, it was just th that exciting. I mean, we all enjoyed the moment.
Craters of the Moon National Monument.